Hello again. So I have Emily here, two Emilys on stage, lovely. <laughs> um, so tell me about Seen It. So um, I founded Seen It about three and a half years ago. Um, and what we do is we help large organizations around the world to scale the way they produce video by engaging their own customers, fans, and employees to capture the content. So we believe that the people who are the most passionate and most knowledgeable about a brand or a subject or product um, should be at the front of the story. OK. And the idea came from when you were on safari, is that right? <laughs> yeah. OK. So I was, I was, um, I was living in uh, Cape Town working for a documentary company in production. Um, so I wasn't on the safari. I was, uh, I was filming. It would be okay. nice to have been on it as well. <laughs> um, but we were, went to go and film this big protest that was happening. Um, but as soon as I got to the crowd, I very quickly realized that everyone was capturing on phones and cameras and um, GoPros, and they had banners. and. They were so passionate about this subject and so knowledgeable, and there was no way that I was ever going to be able to keep up. So why was I trying to tell their story? Yeah, yeah. so I, I ran around the crowd and said, send me anything you have, photos, videos, I'll edit a bigger story and I'll send it back to you. Um, with the whole kind of idea of like, together our message is stronger. Um, which if you say that in a protest, suddenly everyone's like, yeah, you've got to meet my other friend and supporter. And um, from a few days on from my flat kitchen, with no budget or camera equipment, I was able to pull video from an entire country. Um, and I was just so excited by the new way the world is being documented and recorded. Does that not present an issue with the quality of footage that you're receiving and presenting, though? Yeah, so it's, a, it's a, I mean, there's always a thing of like, what is quality and what means quality to you? Mm -hmm. um, I think something that's happening in storytelling now, uh, people want to trust content. They want to be able to relate to it. And actually, really polished content isn't really probably engaging audiences in the way that it used to. Um, video, I think, also has to be reactive. Um, and so you have to kind of balance the, the full HD polished content with actually what is the story that you're trying to tell. Um, also, the whole kind of idea of scene it came up about four years ago. Um, and it's unbelievable not only what's happened technically in terms of the cameras that everyone has in their pockets, um, but actually around confidence and creative confidence in knowing that everyone now is a storyteller. They can create. My mom's like editing videos on her phone. Um, there's just been a real shift in people um, having courage to speak up. And so since those early days, you've gone to form some big partnerships with some large brands and corporations. Haven't mm. you? Can you tell us a bit more about those? Yeah, so, so we're working. Um, we, we work with a subscription model, so we um, sign clients up for a minimum of a year. Um, we're working in three main verticals. So we work uh, in the sort of marketing space, so working with brands like Benefit, Body Shop, The Hut Group, uh, Marks and Spencers, helping them to capture video um, from their own customers or, or employees. We work a lot in broadcast, so BBC, NBC, Universal, creating with super fans around the world. Um, and then the third, which actually is our, one of our fastest growing verticals, and I don't think one that I set out to do, um, is internal communications and working with large corporates like um, HSBC, um, Citibank, Accenture, uh, EY, um, and actually helping them champion the voices of their employees. Okay. Um, so it's a, quite an interesting one, that one. So it's helping businesses understand what their employees are thinking and what yeah. the issues that are important to them as and, well. And I think just leveraging all their knowledge and their experience and expertise and large companies, you know, they really invest in their staff, well, we hope, <laughs> to, um, to, to know everything about the product. So why are they not engaging with them to also tell their stories? Um, and I think at the same time, these large companies who have a quarter of a million employees all over the world, they can feel very disconnected to an organization. So how do you make people feel connected on the other side of the world, driving towards the same goal? Um, and collaborative storytelling has been really kind of made huge impact so far with our clients. And so what for you determine, what do you deem as success? Mm. So um, there are a few sort of different things that we look at. Um, firstly, I think in terms of how many people we can have contribute. So the 
um, getting people to actually get involved in the project's film content and start to see that scale. So with our users, when we have a new user join, um, seeing them start to pick up in terms of how many submissions they they start to submit in. Um, and our clients as well, when they start to see that kind of volume of content coming in, it's, it's really, really exciting because from there, then it's, okay, so now what do you do with all the video you've got coming in? So many of our clients are like, cool, we'll set up one project and then one campaign production is what we'll create from it. And it's like, okay, but you've now got like a thousand videos. Let's do Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. Um, so success also is how many pieces of content we can create from a gallery or, or an archive that we have uh, submitted in. Um, and then on the sort of distribution side, success has been anything from being able to sell uh, millions of pounds worth of product off the back of the video, all the way through to HR policies actually changing internally in companies um, because they've been able to listen to voices of their staff. Okay, um, one kind of medium of, or one way of classifying success that a lot of people use within the tech space is based on funding. And I know you've raised a few rounds, so can you yeah. tell us a bit about your route to, to raising funding and how much you've raised? I, do you know, it's funny that it is linked with success, because I don't think it should be. <laughs> Plenty of companies think, have raised money and then... Yeah, and, and I think then it's, it. some people are really good at blagging it in investor meetings. Um, and some people are probably too honest and frank about things. and. Yeah. Different questions that you're asked in a, in a meeting can totally determine the outcome. Um, there's been so many studies on, uh, that have come out in the press, I don't know if anyone's seen them recently, in terms of the different types of questions even female founders and male founders are asked. One is around ambition and growth, and the other is around, well, how careful are you, and what about the competitors? And so um, I don't think that success of a company should be measured on funding. Um, I think it should be on growth, on uh, scale within your organization, on the clients you're working with, repeat business, and those sort of metrics. Um, uh, we have raised some money. So we've raised about 900,000 to date, which in three, three and a half years isn't very much. Um, the company is about 28 people now, and we're hiring for about another 10 roles. Um, at the moment, please, if anyone knows some good talent, <laughs> guide them towards the site. Um, and we've just closed another funding round at the moment, so about uh, 1.5 now. Okay. Um, and you said yeah. to me off stage there that you're, um, because your team's growing so much, you're, you're relocating at the moment as well, aren't you? Yeah, that has been such a mission. Uh, we are moving offices, so we're moving um, to Far uh, no, from Farringdon to Old Street now. Um, and I'm really excited to be kind of in the Old Street hub because there's there are just, there's so much activity going on with like meetups and uh, other co-working spaces that have talks in the evenings. And one of the, the sort of things I've really learned with such a fast growing team, because a, a year ago we were about eight people, okay. <laughs> so it's been hectic, yeah, <laughs> um, is uh, how you can help um, you know, educate, inspire, <clears throat> and motivate more people in your team. And I think when you're a fast growing company, um, having support from other founders, other networks is just so important. So to be kind of on Old Street, I'm excited about it. Yeah, that whole thing of company culture is such a hot topic at the moment yeah. because of the disasters that we've seen over in the yeah. space. So everyone's kind of, and because talent is in such short supply, yeah. if you have a poisonous company culture, people aren't going to want to work for you. So, so and you're word saying gets that, out. So you're saying that you kind of want to be in an area where you can learn from other companies, see mm. how people are doing it, and, and hopefully make yours one of those companies that Exactly, to... fingers crossed. <clears throat> yeah, and I think also have then other people in the team who are being leaders and managers for the first time also have the support. Because, you know, so many of us are doing these roles for the first time. Um, yeah. And I think one of the most important things is being able to be comfortable being like, I have no idea, I'm completely stuck, can someone help me? Someone comes forward with an idea, you're like, brilliant, can you run with it? Because it feels like you might know a little bit more about this than me. Um, so I want to be able to try and give more um, sort of shared learning um, and, and give the team more access to that as yeah. well as me. I, I think meeting. that honesty is, is really important. There's so many people running around pretending they know what they're doing, but mm. I think it's okay to be like, you know, this is a startup. It's my yeah. first company. Yeah, I don't yeah, know what yeah. I'm doing. It doesn't mean yeah. that you're going to be any less successful. I think, exactly. if anything, it means that you're going to succeed more because mm. if there's a problem, you get it solved more quickly. 100%. And I think what's um, really amazing now is, you know, people, <clears throat> people really want to help. They want to see other people succeed. And... Um, and if they don't, just don't talk to them again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I think there's, um, there is such a, an amazing ecosystem and network at the moment to really support people running businesses. So if you are open about what you 
don't know and nervous about, struggling about, um, it's incredible the help you can get. Um, and I think one of the most important things that you should do as a founder, but actually anyone as a leader in a team, um, find your tribe, find your, your group of people that you can completely let your guard down to. Um, because without that, it's sort of you're all having to kind of be smiles and actually that just backfires in the end. Well, I think that's a fabulous note to end on there. <laughs>